This program contains true stories of rescues. All of the 911 calls you will hear are real. Whenever possible, the actual people involved have helped us reconstruct the events as they happened. March 11, 1992, it was business as usual at a bank in Ottawa, Canada. Around 12.30 p.m., teller Jeff Hamilton noticed a man carrying a knapsack. I didn't see him walking in. I just saw him standing there like, I mean, he could have been a normal customer. Um, and then all of a sudden, all, uh, it all broke loose. Fill it up. I said, fill it up! Come on! We have all kinds of... Uh, robbery seminars and they always told us don't be the hero let him run the show come on hey hey he looked right at the guy right off the bat he almost stood there as if to say yeah right like you're really gonna shoot me type of thing right in the branch I guess sometimes uh, people react a lot differently when uh, when the adrenaline's flowing he said he was going after the guy I guess he went with his gut feeling and uh, did what he thought he had to do. Kevin Mulligan's call was taken by Ottawa Police Dispatcher Rosemary Pennio. Emergency yourself? We have a bank robbery. A Canada Trust. Okay, I have the suspect. He's armed. You have the suspect, sir? The suspect. Okay, where are you? I'm at the corner. My coworker got the original call from the bank and I was registered, so I was listening in. We knew what he looked like, and I, I also knew the officers were already on the way. He's running on foot. I'm behind him on a curve. Go on curve. Boyd Avenue. Look, he's going to fire at me, so... Okay, no, don't stay away from him. Don't I'm, go close. Are you I'm in a vehicle? Just, I'm chasing him in You're, my vehicle. Okay, just stay where you are. He's running. The words, uh, Boyd Avenue right now. Boyd, okay. Okay. He's blue, long coat. He's got a toque. He has the bag. He's got a gun. He's got a newsie. He's armed and dangerous. I wanted him to back off. I really did. I felt he was really getting himself in, in too deep. What kind of car are you in? I'm in a red Chevy van. Now, I've lost him now. You lost him, eh? I've lost him. They're right in behind her. Okay? I've lost him. Okay, stand, stand in line with me, okay? I just... He's here somewhere. Don't go closer. What did oh, you make? I don't know where it is. He's coming at me. Hey, sir, just calm down. Where is he now? Oh, my f he's shooting at me. He's shooting at me. Oh, f Shots are fired here. He's shooting. I'm trying. He's behind me. Okay, Where drive away, it? sir. Sir, please just drive away from him. I got shots all over my f***ing truck. I was so mad. He's yelling at me to stop and shooting at me at the same time. He wants a better shot, I guess. The man is totally bananas. My adrenaline was flowing and I was pumped. What's your first name? Kevin. Kevin, okay. He was determined to get him. And that's when I started getting worried. I felt scared for him and I didn't know if I could control what he was going to do at the other end. I don't know where he is. Kevin, where are you? Boyd and Donnelly right now, looking for him. I can't find him. Don't go close to him anymore, okay? Where Stay he? back, he's gonna shoot at you again. Whereabouts? I think he's headed up towards Turpin Motors. Okay, possibly heading towards Turpin. He's in the body shop right now. Carly Motors? Yeah. Look at this my truck, sir. Holy oh, sh**. shot at me. He's going to kill me. Are you going to have a Kevin? Kevin, what's going on? We have an officer here. Can I have his name? Kevin. Oh. Who's this? Carly Walsh. It's Rosie here. I can't hear you. The constable got into the truck and the line just went dead. 
I was scared because I, I, I was sort of determined that this guy, the suspect, was going to shoot it no matter who. He didn't care who was getting in his way. taking a shot, but I realized that the traffic behind him on the Queensway was very heavy that day. Constable Mike Ryan was leading the pursuit of the suspect. If I missed him, there was a good chance I probably would have hit one of the vehicles in behind. The suspect went through a hole in the fence on the far side of the Queensway. And uh, at that point, I joined up with one of our uh, plainclothes officers, uh, Detective Pino, Mark Pino. And we were probably a good 40, 45 yards away, and it was a windy day. The handgun's just not going to do the job. The one thing that went through my mind is that this guy's either psychotic or possibly wearing body armor. He almost seemed combat trained. He's got no cover whatsoever, and he's firing back at officers, and he doesn't seem to be frightened in the least. at that point, but we knew he wasn't coming out. Five oh four dispatch, we got a suspect inside, he's armed. He's got two hostages. We need the uh, hostage negotiator and, and activate the SWAT team. Acknowledge. A perimeter was set, and members of the SWAT team took up positions around the building. Inspector Elaine Mithot was brought in to try to negotiate the release of the two hostages. He was receptive when he saw that the cellular phone was uh, being offered to him. It's very difficult to get him to settle down because he keeps shouting on the phone and does not consent to listen to anything. It was totally impossible to fulfill his request. It would have put the hostages' life in more danger. This guy was like a, bo a bomb uh, waiting to explode. As we mounted the stairs, Bob just yelled at me to run, and I heard a commotion behind me. Come on up! Hurry! Hurry! When Bob told me to run, there was nothing else in my mind but to get out of the situation. The man said at several points that he uh, would kill both of us and himself, too. Don't move! Stay there! I've got your gun! Get in here! Get in! The SWAT guy was uh, telling me to come over to where he was, and I was using very graphic language, telling him that no, I wasn't going to go over there and, and come and get the bad guy. And then suddenly, after yelling back and forth at each other, I realized that here's another guy with a rifle. I better listen to this guy. And at that point, one of the officers that had been involved from the beginning, through the chase and everything, came running over screaming, he's not the bad guy, he's the good guy, let him up. The suspect was apprehended in a stolen car by police staked out behind the building. The man was totally irrational. It was like he had no plan, and someone without a plan and total desperation is, is very dangerous. I felt I had no choice, that there was no option. And, and faced with that, I decided to fight. 
if he hadn't done what he did, I don't think that either one of us would be here today to talk about it. The suspect subsequently pleaded guilty to multiple felony charges and was sentenced to 12 years in prison. Hostage Bob Ireland and the man who called 911 on a cellular phone, Kevin Mulligan, were honored by the Ottawa Police Department. I'm not a hero. I was just trying to follow a guy from a distance to get him apprehended by the police. And it just didn't happen that way. They go wish first. No. Oh. I wish more people would get involved in helping us out. But uh, I don't want to see anybody get involved and try and do our job to the point where they get shot at or, or get shot or hurt or knifed or anything else because that's what we're getting. We're getting paid to confront these people. We're getting, that's our job. That's what we're trained for. One was all over and sitting in bed. I realized he could have got killed. I don't regret trying to get him apprehended, but I do regret that I could have left my family behind, could have left everything behind just for a crazy fool. Like, I, you know, instead of being gutsy, it's actually nutsy. For Bob and fellow hostage Marilyn Bosch, the painful memories of that day still linger. I had just gotten through five months of unemployment. And then, uh, got a break. I was trying to put my life together again. When this man came in to try to take it all away, with, with no regard for life or, or anything that was important to me, it's, it's a terrible feeling. But I have good family, good friends. They've helped me tremendously. I was very fortunate. I get to see my family again. Carry on.